Hi everyone, welcome to Get Good at Golf and welcome back to Anti-Slice Week. This week we're going to help you never slice a golf ball again and today we're going to do so by telling you something that so many golfers do not realise can help or hinder your golf game when it comes to the dreaded slice. We're of course talking about the grip because so many golfers think oh, if I've got a weak grip I'm going to slice the driver, if I've got a strong grip that's going to help me not slice the driver when realistically we've done a couple of videos already to help you not slice the ball and they will be a lot more helpful so go and check them out and hit that subscribe button if you want to stop slicing the ball but what you start to see generally is if people have a weak grip so if you have maybe the right hand on top the left hand a little bit more underneath that's classed as a weak grip for a right-handed golfer generally what happens there is the club face will be delivered slightly open now for you to slice a golf ball the ball has to physically start left of your target so to do that with an open club face would be impossible. You might hit a block slice. So if you have an open club face, so if you're here and you come across it and the club face is wide open, that ball will start right and go further right. But it won't be a slice, that'll start to the right. The reason why you're slicing the ball, why it starts left, and this is a big misconception that so many golfers need to understand as well. What shot are you hitting? Because if you try and seek some advice, if you ask your PJ Pro, hopefully you're going to go for a lesson anyway, but you say, I'm slicing the ball. Straight away, they're going to say, right, slice, ball starts left, finishes right. Right, it has to be a certain number of impact factors. And this is where so many people online who maybe aren't PJ trained and haven't done the exams or done the reading up and carried on reading up about impact factors and things like that may well struggle. So be careful who you watch and what you watch. But if you then say, right, I'm now going to have a strong grip. So I'm going to put my left hand on top here, but then you still have the same swing path. Now, a strong grip would dictate the club face would close the impact depending how you release the club. This is all subjective to your own release pattern, which is why we would strongly recommend going to see a PGA Pro. If you want some online lessons or you want to come and visit us for a lesson, make sure you check out the link in the description below. But all you're going to do there is come over the top of the ball with a strong grip and you're going to hit it left going left. That's going to be a pull hook potentially because the ball starts left and goes further left. Now, what if I told you there was an element of the grip that could help your game, oh, it's very much winter here in the UK, that could help you hit it straighter, but it's not weak or strong, and it's not how hard you grip it, because that's also something which could help, but generally what you want to see is the club in the right proportion of the hand, and Chris is going to talk us through that now. Guys, we've already done the video on sequencing, so if you are struggling with a slice, make sure you don't just start playing around with your grip, because that's not going to really help the end result that you do want. And if you want to hit drives like this, then make sure you go and check out the sequencing video, but also let's talk grip and let's talk how potentially gripping it better can stop you slicing that golf ball. So guys, your grip there is something that we need to take into account. But if you go for a lesson and somebody straight away changes your grip before looking at anything else, I would take that with a bit of caution. I'd leave. James would leave because obviously like James mentioned there you could have a weak grip they change it to strong all you're going to do is instead of hitting it right hit it left that's not fixing a problem that's just covering it over by changing your grip and saying well at least we've taken the right hand side out of play but now we've opened up the left hand side so one big thing again for speed and for setting this club and having club face control is where it is in your hand so a lot of people start to struggle getting it in the palm of the hand it's through the palm from there they try and get the hand over right hand comes on but from there i can't get any wrist set i can't have control of that club face the toe of the club i don't know where that's going to go and one big thing we see there is you have to actually if you get it in the palm is use a different lever so i'm now bending my arm or elbow to get that club to the top what to make a lever another lever to get that club to the top and obviously from there then we've got two levers to start to work in with and we don't know where we're going to tie that up and how it's going to control yes sometimes you might want to get a little bend in that left arm if you're trying to get more speed but that's where you need to see a pga professional to look at your swing and decide if that's something that you need to do what we want to do is get this through the fingers so you'll see there that i want to get it through the fingers and then it is the pad of your hand here that is sitting on the top so you'll see there that i should be able to pick that up resting in the pad of the hand fingers are around that and i and i have control of that club I face speak for everyone when i say what's going on with the index finger 
infant's fingers going on in a minute. <laughs> but you see that that doesn't need to control it. That is going to either be interlocked or is going to be part of your grip. And then from there, I now have control. I can get that club to go up. It's going to have less rotation because I've now got it in control. But if you're struggling to say, well, I know I've been told that a lot. I don't know exactly where it needs to be. I don't know how to get my thumb on the top and the palm on the top. A club that you have in your bag that can help you with that is the total opposite. So if I go to my putter, famous last words, when it's stuck. Yeah, all right, mate. Any minute now. If I go to my putter, we don't need to take the head cover off, we just need to use the grip. So we've got a flat part on the front of the grip here and we can start to feel like, okay, I can get that through my fingers, I can get the pad sitting on the flat part at the top and I can get my thumb on there. If we then bring my right hand on, again, I can get my thumb sitting on the top and that is what we would say is more of a neutral grip. But having that flat edge on the front of your putter can really help you get your hands into that correct position and get you that good feel because it's okay, me and James telling you, exactly what you need to do it's going back in but you need something to give you that exact feel we want you to make sure that you are getting the correct feel to help you get good at golf once we're in here and we have that grip even if you come in and you set up through the fingers set the pad on then we know we can get this club working exactly how we want releasing how we want which is a video that's going to be coming also in this week talking about release patterns because a lot of people don't know am i trying to release it from here am i trying to hold it off what am i trying to do but if we get that grip right we can get over the ball with confidence and start to stop that slice and hit nice towering shots just like that draw it back into the right side of the fairway and if you do that guys that's going to help you get good at golf